Hello family and thank you for coming back to the channel where we are talking about none other than Sherry Shepard. Mm-hmm. Sherry Shepard and her uh I guess you would call it a, a, a goodbye send off to Wendy Williams and hello to her new show and this that and the third. But let's just take a listen uh here and see what Sherry got to tell us regarding Wendy Williams sent off. Okay. Thank you so much. I just want to say hi to everybody. Hi, DJ Sus One. She got to introduce everybody, which Hello. not necessary. Marco. Hi, Marco. Hey, Sherry. Look at you. And Suzanne. Hi, Sherry. And Norman. Yeah. Oh, Norman at the same. Same, same, Hello, everybody. Same. This is a big day today. Um, today is the final episode of the Wendy Williams Show. Woo. And uh, I am one of the many guest hosts this season who have had the honor and the privilege to be a part of this iconic show. This is the most incredible staff and crew of the Wendy Williams <laughs> Thank you so much for supporting us, the guest hosts that were allowed to come in and fill in. Marco G, Sus One, thank you for bringing in such fun over the years. And on behalf of all of the guest hosts, I want to say thank you so much to all of the loyal Wendy watchers for making this show a success for the last 14 years. And most of all, we have to thank you, Wendy Williams, because, yes. And I couldn't really believe that uh, she was expecting Wendy Williams to actually come on this show for the last tape. I mean, we are being conceited now, aren't we? Not Sherry, but Delmar Mercury. days on the radio to ruling daytime talk for 13 seasons Wendy earned her title as the queen of all media all of gossip media yeah that's like Wendy Williams. Williams. if you think about it Wendy Williams changed daytime talk with her unique take on hot topics her one-of-a-kind celebrity interviews, the signature Ask Wendy segments, and of course, y'all, her famous, How you doing? How you Absolutely. doing? Absolutely. And I want to say, Miss Wendy, you are an icon, and you are loved by so many. So many. Wind ain't coming out, y'all. Wind ain't coming out. <laughs> I do. But it was it's, nice it's that she gave, they gave a chance. I want you guys to stay tuned because later in the show, the staff have put together a beautiful, beautiful tribute to Wendy and this show. It is filled with amazing moments from the last 13 seasons. And also, what's so wonderful is Vanessa Williams is here. And Vanessa, <laughs> Vanessa Williams. 
Create a YouTube short showing how you're stepping out for pride. Use hashtag Hold on, guys. We got a commercial. And Vanessa. <laughs> Vanessa Williams. <laughs> Vanessa Williams was the very first guest on the Wendy Show 13 years ago. This is her with Wendy. So. I cannot wait to talk to Vanessa about her memories of being on the Wendy Williams show. And she also has a new Broadway play called POTUS, which I actually got to see the other night. You got to see POTUS. And we're going to hear about that, too. So let's do what Wendy does and get to the hot topic. <laughs> give a big shout out to Kevin Hart because Kevin Hart is the executive producer of an A&E docuseries called Right to Offend. And this is about black comics who use comedy to challenge society's injustices. And I happen to be in it. Uh, we got a sneak peek. We got to watch this sneak peek. part of this documentary because comedy is everything to me. The world of comedy is made up of a bunch of weirdos. We are literally, and it's not a bad thing, Suzanne, because comics, we think of stuff, it's like, you know, typical normal people put the circle in the circle and then the square, everything matches. When you are a comic, you're putting a square peg inside of a circle with the triangle or you just kick it over. It's always, it's literally, it is because of stand-up comedy that I have a career in this business. It comedy has opened every single door for me. And whatever happens to me in my life, I turn it around and I think, how can I make this turn into laughter? And so if you want to know the difference between a stand-up comic and a person who's just funny, is someone who is just funny can make the friends laugh. You can make them laugh at the water cooler, at work. But if you're a stand-up comic, we have to make you laugh at 2 a.m. if you're drunk. Like, we got to get on the stage. If you are heckling, we got to make you laugh. No question about it, which I can do that. And comics, we turn tragedy into the tragedy, the struggles. We turn it into humor. So, like, you know how Taylor Swift, when she goes through stuff, she'll write a song about her hurt. Comics, I feel like, you know, she sells a millions of records. But comics, it's like I feel like we are the Taylor Swift of comedy. Yeah. Because comics... <laughs> will take the hurt to the stage. When I went through my divorces, that's what I talked about on stage. When I use the material that I, that in, and I use it as material when I go on to stage, even when I was going through like an infidelity in my marriage, and I was so distraught and devastated and crying, all I kept thinking was, I gotta get on stage and talk about it. And an executive saw me doing the material on stage, and they said, oh my gosh, we got to do a sitcom from this. And the sitcom turned into, uh, it's on YouTube now, but it was on Lifetime. It's called Sherry. And it was about, you know, Malcolm Jamal Warner played my husband who messed around with the white girl. They had a child. Um, then, you know, the, the net, everybody, and it was supposed to be Niecy Nash playing my best friend. And so that was a comedy from tragedy in my life. Gerard Carmichael used his comedy uh, special to come out of the closet. So he talked about the challenges that this presented for his family. And we were dying laughing about his pain. One of Richard Pryor's highest best-selling comedy albums was Live on the Sunset Strip. Y'all remember that? Live on the Sunset Strip. Richard Pryor. Talk about, he talked about being so high that he set himself on fire and burned 90% of his body. Now how you make that funny? Watch Live on the Sunset Strip. When I was at the Friars Club recently, Tracy Morgan joked about how he tragically got hit by a Walmart truck and he almost died. And we were on the floor laughing. So this, it's a hard thing for comics now because I think comedy is under attack. Suzanne, we got the cancel culture and so many things happening in society. So I think that comics, we were the ones that would say the emperor has no clothes. You know, we were the ones that would make you laugh. But now it's no matter what we say, sometimes people get offended and then they want to come and cancel. So, and uh, I'm, even we talked to Melissa Rivers yesterday about Joan Rivers and the cancel culture. I think it would have been very hard 
for Joan Rivers in this type of culture. So I'm grateful that Kevin Hart has done this docu-series to put a spotlight on the significant, the uh, what is it, the significance yeah. of comedy <laughs> in our world. So right to offend, right, I can't even talk. I'm still thinking about. <laughs> no, I'm thinking. Uh -huh. uh, right to offend premiered last night at the Tribeca Film Festival, and you can catch the full series on the A and E Network. So thank you, Kevin. <laughs> Oh my God! This is a hard one today. Brad Pitt and Gwyneth Paltrow, they did a joint interview 25 years after calling off their engagement, and they talked about how wonderful it is that they can be friends now. So they even told each other that they love each other. I was... Would you, would you do an interview with your, uh, one of your ex-husbands? <laughs> Would you go to therapy with one of your ex-husbands? Oh, would I go to therapy uh -huh. with one of my ex-husbands? If I could pay less uh, alimony, I would. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, right. You know, I think it's great to go to therapy. I think we should go to therapy to get to that place of friendship. Um, but, you know, they split 25 years ago. If you can't be friends after 25 years, that's two decades and a half. So if you can't be friends after that, then you just need to chuck it in. Now, if you tell me that if that had been Jennifer Aniston, I would have, you know, I'd have been like, oh, really? They talking now? Uh -huh. Is it her and Angelina? And Brad? <laughs> right. Because now what happened with them, you know, Brad and Angelina uh -huh. got together and then Jim. And that is about it or what Sherry was trying to say about but she kind of took the significance off of the last show being for Wendy but she did say a video was going to be playing of Wendy's past uh, interviews and stuff of that nature but it seemed like she talked more about herself and comedy than she did with saying goodbye uh, or so long or farewell to the Wendy Williams show which is kind of awkward because I was like okay you got time to promote your stuff you're not coming in into the ranks until uh, fall, September. So let's just keep talking about Wendy and how y'all did her wrong. <laughs> but to me, Sherry didn't really do her wrong. It was just she was there at a pivotal time when Wendy was not health-wise able to continue her show. Where we would make sense of her even up there talking about a celebrity. Because she was kind of talking a lot of gibberish herself. But, um... It just is when it's meant to be, it's meant to be, or how most people say you was at the right place at the right time, uh, whatever for you is going to be for you. So those are great adages to live by and to forge ahead. But I can see Wendy doing a podcast from her house, from her bedroom, or wherever she wanted to do it. You know, she has the equipment, she has the money to uh, make that dream uh, come true. And she might have been working with somebody um all alone um and she just didn't tell anybody that this was going to be an opportunity that she could do after her non-compete clause is up and and retire and she can go and be with somebody else who's going to pay her a truckload of money as well to do something as a podcast because like i said a podcast you don't necessarily have to be on camera you could do it strictly from like a radio podcast but, you know, if you want the intimate side of Win uh, Wendy, you want to see her face and her talking and her gest gestures and her body language. Yeah, a lot of people would miss that part. But if you just like listening to her voice, you listening to the information she's trying to give you, it's perfect for her. And she don't have to even show what she looks like. Hell, she don't even have to come out her bedroom clothes if she don't want to. Okay. It just is what it is. But that's all I have for this particular video, guys. Hopefully, y'all like it, love it. Gotta have more, and I'll see y'all next time. Bye-bye.